Hey guys, what is up Dave here coming back to you with a brand new video on the channel and today's video is actually all about this game I found called Monster Harvest. It sounds like a very cool game. It's kind of Stardew Valley-esque farming gameplay with Pokemon style battle elements because basically what you do in Monster Harvest is there's multiple seasons. During these seasons you plant seeds you combine your seeds with something called slimes. Um, these make your seeds turn into plants that are alive that then turn into something called a planimal, which is kind of something like a Pokemon almost. There's no Steam Workshop support for this game. There's no mods that I've been able to find for this game. It's all just... Uh... <laughs> you can tell I've been looking at JDM stuff. <laughs> I just noticed my tabs <laughs> not to get off track my ADHD but look at this thing I want one so bad anyway um back to monster harvest yeah it's it's kind of Pokemon meet Stardew Valley but it's got the same uh, art style as an, a really kind of crazy game that I think was called kindergarten I don't I think that's what the game was called you were kind of like this little kid kindergartner and you had to like go around you like killed other students it was a crazy game Anyway, it's got mixed reviews, and I sat down last night because I really wanted to give this game a playthrough, uh, maybe do it as a stream, do it as a video series, something like that, because it sounded like something I would enjoy that's not a racing game. Finally, something not a racing game that I'm going to enjoy. Uh, Dave the Diver? Okay, do I, have to play, do I have to play every game on Steam that has my name in it? Anyway. Um, and I scrolled down, and I started looking at the reviews, and obviously they're mixed. And this, Jimbo's Grapes, great username, uh, I read through his, uh, whole entire review here, which, thank you. People that put this level of detail into their reviews are absolute goats. Like, they're the best people on the planet. Because they tell you every little thing to expect. Now, were there spoilers in this review for the game? Kind of. But, he basically outlined that, you know, for the good, it's ease of gameplay, the game is really easy to play through, everything is snappy, the farms are huge, you are also really free to plant as much as you want, and make huge mega crops, and make hundreds of thousands of in-game money. Lots of features, lots of activities to do, and goals to work towards, things like that. The bad was all the planimals are basically the same. They're just reskins or, like, color changes. Uh, there's some, like, weird unbalanced stuff with the game. Um, so first off, you have to mention the bugs. Once you reach a certain point in the wet season, your crops just stop growing. That's a terrible bug for a game that's a farming game. You have to basically exit the game and then go back in. Sometimes it'll corrupt, is basically what he says elsewhere. The combat the combat is awful. There are only 12 planimals in the game. Really? Um, they all do exactly the same thing. There are no stats other than your level, and all the planimals are the same levels. Ex the same health, same damage, same move points, very minor differences in move sets. There's no swapping in or out your planimals, no typing. So, you know, Pokemon, there's, you know, fire, dark, water, uh, uh, ground, lightning, uh, fairy. You know, there's all the different types of Pokemon. Um, the AI is terrible. Uh, he says later on in this write-up that the AI code just feels like it's a random number generator and... You know, if it rolls a 2 on its first turn, it's going to use some form of an HP uh, gaining attack, even if it hasn't lost any HP yet. So there's no systematic checks for the AI. NPCs are terrible. Every single crop is exactly the same. Uh, there's They're just like reskins of each other. Like, there's a lot of issues with this game that sounds like and he puts it at the end of this. It sounds like a passion project that got out of hand and then they just wanted to finish it to finish it. Or there were deadlines that they were being pushed towards. I think it's more of a passion project that just 
got out of hand. And then they got to the point where things are kind of like duplications of code. And when you have those duplications of code where, let's take 1320 Challenge, for example. Um, car showroom. All these cars. You, we had to make up the database by hand originally. So you're basically duplicating stuff, but then changing the actual specs of the stuff and like making it work. You know, what's the wheel size on these versus this? What's the horsepower changes? Like all that duplicate stuff, or even just like computer challenges. You're only changing minor things, but you're doing a lot of code for minor things. So it's, I think, what ended up happening is once you get to the point where you're having to just create the plant animals, create the plants, create the NPCs, it's kind of boring and you kind of lose touch and you just copy and paste. And then you don't differentiate differentiate anything because you just want it to work. So, I didn't want to spend $17 on a game that sounds like it's awful. Um, so I'm going to admit straight up 100% that I did pirate it, as you can see here. And something that, you know, even like the icon just feels very like MS Paint at most, or like GIMP. <laughs> but it's mono bleeding edge, which means it's PC based IL to CPP. I wanted to look through the files, see if it's hack or moddable, see if we can actually maybe fix it, so to speak. But if it's mono bleeding edge, probably not. So first off, obviously right here, there's a start.bat, silent crashes. Is the game so bad that it has to like be told not to crash? That's ridiculous. Uh, anyway, boot config, app info, I don't know what this kind of stuff is. Wow, that's really bright. I'm in a dark room. Maple powered games, mod Monster Hunter, okay. Boot config, I guess I shouldn't have closed it, closed it. VR enabled, no. HDR display enabled, no. Wait for native debugger, whatever. So nothing there really. Global game manager stuff, let's see, file size. I wish you could just open this stuff up with 7-zip. I know I could use like Unity Asset Explorer. So definitely visuals of this game could be easily modified. Uh, because you just open up these asset. I had a yawn come on really suddenly and I didn't want to yawn into the microphone. Oh my god, that was very awkward and you know I'm not going to edit it out. Anyway, um, you just open these files in something like Unity Asset Explorer and then you can rip the files, change them up, put them back. So visual modding is definitely possible. Let's see what's in resources. Your standard Unity crap. Your plugins. Uh, Steamworks. What is Steamworks? Is this for like Steam Workshop and it's just not enabled on Steam? Steamworks. Steamworks is a C Sharp wrapper for Valve Steamworks API and is completely free and open source. Uh, you can use Steamworks.net with Unity or non Unity based net. Net projects. Primary goal is to make getting started as easy as possible. Oh, so this is just like an API for Steam. Got it. Games using Steamworks. Oh, wow, there's a lot. Absolute Drift. I've, I think I've played this. Is this Harvest whatever on here? It's not. Or Monster Harvest, I guess is what it is. Uh, it's not. This game looks fun. I would love to mod it so the camera angle is normal and not from above. But that's well above my pay grade of understanding of modding. Uh, okay, so there's some stuff in here. Darks. Oh yeah, because I pirated it. <laughs> There we go. God, I'm really special. Anyway, um, whatever. 
Yes, yeah, so managed. There are DLL files. Can they be modded like DLL files, though? Because if it was mono bleeding edge, isn't that normally... No, it's not. That's right. It would have had a, like, gameassembly.dll or something. Ah, uh, yes. I was messing with Racing Rivals again because I have no life. Uh, anyway, so now that we know it's DLL, this is a really good thing. Is it all standard DLL? So the AI actually has, like, its own API. Rewired is here. Uh, it is mostly just the standard lean pool. That's nothing. Sign machine. Yeah, all the code should just be in here. Oh, really? Oh, that's just... I understand why, but... Well, that ruins the modability of it. Bird flock. Like, it's still doable, but we don't know what does what is the big problem here. So, like, we don't know what a lot of this mumbo jumbo does unless we open it up. Chat controller. Why would there be a chat controller for a game that doesn't have online functionality? It's advertised as single player. Why is there a chat? They're using a chat API for like giving you achievement information in game? What? Cloud spawner, okay. Cloud movement, okay. Uh combat stuff, combatant reward. It's so weird the things that are not encrypted as far as function naming. Cooking. I wonder if the demo doesn't have encrypted uh, stuff to it. Dev button. Oh boy. I love when there's a dev button. Where's a bool? Because a bool is definitely going to probably make it visible. Oh, key codes. So there's going to be something in here that makes development stuff show up interesting that they just left that in here. Locked, unlocked, and claimed. Oh yeah, there is a bad guy in this game too. But yeah, now that I'm seeing it like this, oh, that's unfortunate. Animal action. Yeah, you just can't do anything to this. And this is this goes back to what I said a couple of weeks ago in my TechX Discord in the modding section. Modding isn't fun anymore. Like, yeah, I'm glad there's still DLL based games because DLL is way more fun to modify. But as developers have come become smarter, anti cheat to become better. And IELTS to CPP becomes more and more of a thing where if you're a hobbyist at best, you're hex editing and that's it. Uh, it's not fun anymore. And that's kind of why I stopped modding, at least in a negative sense. Like what I want to do is I want to open up No Limit 1 and try to completely overhaul the game and have some fun with it. But no one's going to play that. Nobody's going to like enjoy a mod of a game that's dead for example or, or doesn't have multiplayer servers which granted i don't know how the multiplayer in that game works i think it works off of proton and that's probably just not not gonna last forever um but seeing games end up more and more like this is ruining the hobbyist style of hacking and modding of games. And I'm not mad at the developers for this. Like, this is a good thing because you don't want your game hacked or modded when you don't intend for it to be. 
But at the same time, you can look at games like Fallout 4, uh, Skyrim, um, Trackmania. Um, as dumb as it's going to sound to throw this in here, uh, 1320 Challenge and Combat Arms. Combat Arms didn't allow modding. We figured out a way. Uh, there's even a modding bypass right now, and you can still mod Combat Arms in 2023. As far as challenge, thankfully it was Adobe Flash, and it's very easy to exploit Adobe Flash. We literally have tools to do it. Like I've been working on what's called the perfect client, where I can import wheels, import cars, import custom paint jobs, all this stuff. That keeps it fun. That game is 20 years old. It came out in 2001. It's 22 years old. And we made a server for it. It took a very long time, and I won't say we, because Espionage made the server for it. Um, I tried in the past. <laughs> That's as good as it gets. It's just... This is modding now. Unless you know what you're doing, even then, you're not going to try to add features to this by reading through jumbled code and then guessing and checking. Good luck. Like, that's the kind of modding that I miss, is adding features, adding... That's the kind of stuff I want to do. Like, an old racing game, like No Limit 1, like I said, I can go into here with the C-sharp, and I can add custom car parts. I can modify uh, car information. There's a whole bunch of stuff I could do. Same with Combat Arms. I can mod in a custom 3d model of a gun or 1320 challenge i can put in custom wheels and cars or look at skyrim oh my god there's complete custom campaign sections where people have like added hogwarts to the freaking game it's i think developers need to realize that modding is here to stay hacking is here to stay don't allow the exploitive stuff but allow something for a replayability of your game by your fans of adding in their own custom content. Not something that's going to break the game like wall hacks in an FPS game, but maybe allow them to do custom textures or something like that. I don't know. I'm very... It's very strange where the gaming world is going. I'm not happy with it. I hope it turns around. I really do. But I don't know. I don't think it will. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.